<laughs> Your burning questions. Okay. okay. Easiest way to get into cycling, Firstly, start off with the bike. The next step would then be to make sure that the bike fits your body because just like shoes, we all have different sizes and the right size of, of bike uh, for the right size of type of body is, is critical. Oof. So it depends who with a tandem bike. Eh? It's a relationship make or break a tandem. Eh? Whereas a unicycle leaves you alone, you've got no one else to blame but yourself. I would probably go unicycle. So uh, as with all shoes, cycling shoes, it's a minefield out there and there are a variety of different brands and si styles and sizes. What is important is that you have the, the right shoe that fits the foot. So in terms of, of shoe size as well as the width, sometimes toe boxes uh, in some designs are very narrow and some are very wide. You want to find the shoe that fits you the most. But one of the major things that you can do to, to avoid chafe is to make sure that number one, that your bibs or your shorts um, uh, fit properly. Uh, and that you have a very comfortable chamois sitting in there to, to prevent any uh, sort of abnormal moisture buildup as well as to, to provide some cushioning on the seat. And then secondly is to actually apply liberally a lot of lubrication and that can be anything from a, a zinc oxide mix to uh, your know, standard status hall mixes that you get uh, in the pharmacies etc and the bike shops. Uh, apply that liberally before your race and just make sure that uh, you keep that going throughout the race if you can and take a tub in your back pocket if you need to. Jeez, I'm going to give away my age here. My song that I learned to for motivation would be probably, as cheesy as it sounds, Rhythm is a Dancer by Snap and all its remixes. <laughs> Absolutely yes, cross training has massive benefit when it, when it comes to cycling. Uh, it allows you to work muscles that cycling generally doesn't work, so it gives you a really a nice complete body workout. It also allows active recovery of your cycling muscles while you are working muscles that, uh, that, that don't normally work with and when you're engaged in cycling. It allows you to, uh, uh, to strengthen uh, connective tissue such as muscles and tendons and therefore prevents injury going forward when you are cycling. I would recommend a professional bike fit. So that is visiting uh, uh, your local bike shop. Most of them have got mechanics and systems that can uh, do professional bike fits for you and where they get the exact measurements. But if you're at home and you'd like to just do a sort of a rough, uh, you know, uh, squint your eye calculation, one of the things you can do is just sit in the, on the saddle um, and put your, your, your feet at the six o'clock and the 12 o'clock position. So in other words, one at the bottom at six o'clock and the other side at 12 o'clock. On the six o'clock position, um, when your foot's at the bottom, you want to make sure that your angle of your knee is roughly about 25 to 30 degrees uh, in knee flexion. If your knee is too bent or it is too straight, it's gonna mean that you are either straining too far to reach the pedal, the bottom of the, of the crank stroke, or that, you are, uh, that, that your saddle is too low uh, and your knee is, is pointed too high. 